Now moving on to the question seven, we have an equation for a curve which is y, uh, y is equals to e to the power negative x squared times sine three x, and the curve has a stationary point at the point p. Show using calculus that the x coordinate of p is a solution of the equation. This right. So we just need to make x the subject from this equation that at point p the value of dy over dx is equals to zero so in order to differentiate this we need to use the product rule so let's consider this function to be fx and let's consider this function to be gx If we apply the product rule, the product rule states that the derivative will be equals to fx, which is e to the power negative x squared, times g prime x, which is equals to 3 cos 3x. Plus if prime x, if we differentiate this, this will give us a value of negative 2x times e to the power negative x squared multiplied by gx, which is sine 3x. Now, if you guys have problems in differentiating uh, in the differentiation chapter of P3, we will very soon record a lecture video on it. So just uh, just for this moment, think of it like this. If you differentiate e to the power of fx, you will get f prime x times e to the power of fx. Now we can set this equation to zero. Right. Now let's simplify this equation. So this will be 3 e to the power negative x squared times cos 3x minus 2x e to the power negative x squared sine 3x is equals to 0. Now since there is a tan involved in this equation, we need to divide this whole equation by cos 3x. So this becomes 3 e to the power negative x squared minus 2x e to the power negative x squared multiplied by tan 3x equals 0. Now as you can see in the given equation there is no e to the power negative x squared. So we need to we need to divide this whole equation by e to the power negative x squared. So that will give us 3 minus 2x times tan 3x equals 0. Now we just need to make x the subject. So tan 3x can be written as 3 divided by 2x. And if you bring tan to the right side of the equation, this becomes arc tan x. So that's arc tan 3 divided by 2x and if you bring 3 to the right hand side of the equation this becomes 1 over 3 so that is the answer to the first part of the question now moving on to the next part of the question they have given us an iteration formula and the value of x1 is 0 0.4 now we just need to find out the value of x2 So keep in mind that when you're finding out the first iteration value, you need to show some workings. Uh, wait. So the working would look something like this. 1 over 3 r 10. 3 divided by 2 times 0 0.4. So this is enough workings. 
so now we just need to write down the answer so this will be equals to 0 0.4367 and then in the next question they have told us to find out the value of x4 now for the rest of the iteration you do not need to find out uh, you do not need to show any workings you can just say that x4 is equals to uh, wait we'll just find out the value of x4 So the value of x4 is around 0 0.4307. Now in the next part of the question, uh, they have told us that to use a suitable interval and a suitable function which should be stated, show that the x coordinate of p is 0 0.43. All right. So the function would look something like this, right? Because this is, e this is related to the x-coordinate of p. So you first need to state this function that fx is equals to 1 over 3 arc tan 3 divided by 2x. Now we need to use a suitable fun a suitable interval to show that the x coordinate of p is 0 0.43 corrected to two to three decimal places. So the interval, the lower limit will look something like this: 0 0.43495. This is the lower limit, and the upper limit would be 0. 435 oh 4305 so now we just need to substitute these two values of x into our function so when the value of f is 0 0.4295 this will be equal to 0 0.4306 and when the value of x is 0 0.4305 okay so there was a mistake is that we need to state the function but the thing is that we considered x to be fx what we need to do is that we need to make uh, on on one side of the equation there will be the function and the other side of the equation it will be zero so the function would look something like this x minus one over three r ten three divided by two x this will be equals to zero so this is the actual function uh, sorry for that so this will be x minus this so when the value of x is 0 0.4295 this is equals to around minus 1.141 dot, dot, dot times 10 to the power negative 3 and when the value of x is 0 0.4305 this will be a positive value which is 6.3 869 dot, 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 times 10 to the power negative 5. Now there is a change in sign which means that x is equals to 0 0.43 corrected to two, three decimal places because the change in sign means that the function lies uh, the value of x lies uh, in this part. So if this is 0 0.4295 this will be 0 0.4305 which means that the value of x lies somewhere around 0 0.43 0 0.430 so now we just need to end with a conclusion that since sign changes and fx is continuous
Well, you do not need, uh, really need to state this because they have told us that the function is continuous in the first part of the question. So, x coordinate of p is equals to 0 0.430 corrected to three decimal places. This is not the actual answer. This is just an estimated answer. So that is it for this question. And I will see you guys in the next video.